Good morning, I'm here right now in New York City on a roof to explain to you how I'm a polygot. I speak four languages. I'm gonna show you how you can do it too. Just kidding, I actually have difficulty speaking English as well as learning languages. What I'll be sharing with you is my experience growing up as an Italian Chinese American in New York. Let's get into it. Slow clap for all mixed race people out there. So this video is not only for mixed race people, it's for anyone who has ever felt at one point in their life like they could not fit in. My name is Michael Nicastro, nice Italian name. My father, who was born in Sicily and immigrated to the United States to New York when he was like five or six years old. My mother, she's Chinese American. My Chinese grandmother is from Hong Kong. My Chinese grandfather is from Toisan, a small little village in the Guangdong province of China. I grew up in a very Italian American community in Long Island, about 30 to 45 minutes to Manhattan by train. So what does that mean? Italian Americans, a lot of pizzerias, a lot of barbershops, some pizzerias in my town, Umberto's, Umberto's of New Eye Park, Prince Umberto's, King Umberto's, they're all named the same thing. They all have delicious pizza. So I ate a lot of pizza. I also ate a lot of Chinese food because I was raised by my Chinese grandmother. Both my parents works. My grandmother really took care of me instilled in me a lot of values. So she would cook home-style Chinese food, simple stir fries with meat, veggies, rice. When I was younger, I was a little chubby. I guess the pizza and Papa's cooking that I became a little fat and I felt self-conscious of myself. There weren't any Asian people, maybe a couple, but they thought of me as the Chinese kid. And it was funny because people would see me and they would think that I was Chinese. And my grandmother would try to speak Chinese to me when I was younger, but I didn't really want to speak it because I didn't think I was Chinese. Like, it's a weird relationship. When I went to Chinatown when I was younger, it would feel almost foreign, but at the same time, comfortable a little bit because some of the foods I recognized because my grandmother used to make them, but the whole environment was just so new, so different from what I was used to, or I didn't even want, really want to be a part of that. Another story when I was in elementary school, this is a true story. My papa, my grandmother used to make me lunch sometimes, and one, one time she made me like a Chinese stir fry with rice, and I brought it to school to the cafeteria. I opened it up, and I guess it was like different from everybody else. I was eating like ham sandwiches, cheese sandwiches. I don't even think, because we tend to exaggerate our past, I don't even think people People made fun of me. I just think that I was so embarrassed to eat something different from what everyone else was. So what I would do is I, I would get the food and I would throw it out. And I'm ashamed to do this. I would just throw it out and then I would eat cookies and chips. That's another reason why I was fat. Probably. <laughs> But then they found out that I wasn't eating my lunch, so then they told my parents, Papa and my, well, my mom, I guess, started making me like sandwiches, like ham sandwich, cheese sandwich. So then I started bringing that to school. But I realized like, I didn't want to eat that either. I didn't like that either, so I'd throw that out too. I didn't want to eat the Chinese food because I felt self-conscious, and I didn't want to eat the American lunch because I didn't personally like it. I'd just go home and my Papa would make like a giant lunch and I'd eat a lot, and then I'd eat pizza pretty often too. <laughs> With that said, I always thought I was closer to my Italian heritage. Growing up in my community, they were all Italian-American kids. Most of my friends are Italian-American. I still have Italian-American relatives in Queens. I also have family in Italy and Sicily. I went to visit them a couple years ago. It was great. On my Chinese side, I don't have too much family. We didn't really keep the Chinese culture alive. Always felt like I was more Italian growing up than Chinese, even though, even though people thought I was Chinese for the most part in elementary school. But with that said, my childhood was great. When I got to high school, I had a little growth spurt and I was like the same size that I am now, 5'7". I had more confidence in myself. I played a lot of sports, football, baseball, wrestling. I had a great time, like my high school was fun. I don't regret it at all and I'm, I'm really grateful. These are some things that my parents never had. My, my mom actually went to the same high school and elementary school. So she definitely had a more difficult time than I did. And I tried to fit in my whole time throughout my elementary and high school, but deep down I was still insecure about who I was really as a person. And I didn't want to speak Chinese when I was younger. I didn't go to Chinese school. My grandmother kind of gave up speaking Chinese to me because I would give her a lot of that's my fault because I was trying to fit into the dominant culture. It wasn't until I went to college, I went to Arizona State University. So big jump from New York to Arizona. And I lived in an international dormitory for two years of my school there. And I met people from all over the world. It was amazing. I also met Chinese people from China. What was interesting, which kind of like messed with me a little bit was they didn't view me as being Chinese. They viewed me as being Western, where 18 years of my life I was 
viewed as being Chinese. But then when I met other people from China, I thought like, oh, we finally have something in common. But I realized we're quite different. You know, how I grew up was quite different. Them not viewing me as Chinese made me very insecure about myself again. I start drinking tea now, no, no coffee and a little coconut milk, it's quite delicious. During college, I studied Italian, I visited Italy, I worked on a farm, I picked grapes and olives, I spent some time there, I visited my relatives in Sicily. That really opened my eyes to Italian culture and what it means to be Italian. And I went to Hong Kong for the first time, I went to China for the first time. You know, at one point I remember walking through Hong Kong and I think I was in the central business district. It was around lunchtime and Hong Kong's crazy. It's like New York on steroids. Like the pace of life is super quick, but I was walking around slowly like, ah, yeah, yeah. and people behind me were like, what the? They're like, fight deal, yeah. Like they were like, oh, this guy's got a, he's walking too slow. But I remember thinking it's cool to be Chinese, looking at the tall buildings and seeing the food. Like it's really cool to be Chinese. And this was like a moment for me. I dated someone from China, which was nice. It was an eye-opening experience. Of course, it was tough, but it really opened my eyes to the world, opened my eyes to myself. And during this time, my language skills I spoke predominantly English at home with my mom and dad. That was my college days. I graduated. I was working in advertising just to make mom proud. And on the weekends, I would go to Saturday Chinese school and learn Cantonese and Mandarin. That was really beneficial to me. And then after class, I would go around Chinatown, New York City and go eat food. But after a couple of years of working in New York City, I decided to quit my restaurant management job that I worked so hard for. I was so happy for it, but I was like, there's more to life than this. Go to Shanghai, China in 2018 to study Mandarin and hopefully find a job there. I studied Mandarin. I had a great time. It changed my life forever. It was one of the best experiences of my life, meeting people from all over the world, reconnecting with Chinese culture, deep, deep into Chinese culture. It was amazing. I came back home. Here I am today, changed with a new perspective on who I am as a person. So I gave you a little talk about my experience growing up, kind of searching for myself. So how do people view me? So like I said, when I was younger, a lot of my classmates were Italian American and Western people. They viewed me as being Asian or Chinese. And then when I was in college, I met more Asian people and Chinese people. They viewed me as being Western. <laughs> and then I guess visiting China when I was younger, they would probably think I was from uh, Xinjiang province, China or Spanish. But once they found out that I was half Chinese biologically, it's like, oh, he's handsome. Going to Italy, labeled as the American, the American guy. <laughs> and then I think now it's still like a mystery. People view me as Spanish, Filipino. It just depends. It's now more like a conversation started. Some common questions people have asked me throughout my life. Th this one annoys me a lot. But like, do you like Asian girls? Oh, you like Asian girls, don't you? You know what that means. My mom is Chinese biologically. Like, if I like an Asian girl, what does that mean? Like, that, that shouldn't mean anything. I get it, a lot of white, white guys date Asian girls. Another thing they ask me is, oh, can you use chopsticks? And then they, they like give me a test, like, pick up that, pick up that. And I hold chopsticks wrong, but I can still pick that up. Also, a lot of times they'd ask me, oh, can you speak Italian? Or can you speak Chinese? It's always the question, I guess, like, what are you? That has been a question that I received a lot in my childhood. Not so much now. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of being mixed. Let's start with the cons. So when I was younger, I felt like I had a little bit of an identity crisis because I didn't know who I could relate to. I didn't have friends that looked like me. I didn't have people that looked like me. I didn't know which side to pick. I didn't know if I should be more Italian or be more Chinese. You ever filled out one of those surveys or forms where you have to choose your race and they give you options like white, Caucasian, black, Hispanic, and other usually. There wasn't like a mixed race selection. So other, there was no box for me to check off. He's mixed race, he's Italian and Chinese. There's no other people. Another con, your families, there's stark cultural differences and your families might not get along. Uh, you know, they just like disagree strong on certain things because the cultures are very different and their mindsets are very different. And especially like when you go to family gatherings, if the two sides of the family are together, they tend to separate, they don't really mix. Like the Italian side was over here, the Chinese side was over here and like I'm caught in the middle trying to play middleman. Like, oh, you want this, like this, this, this. I'm like, oh. And also, since you don't fit into a particular category, people will like to put their own label on you, like to put you in 
their category what they think the big issue is society doesn't really embrace mixed culture people as much as they should they tend to like to label things as black or white like barack obama he's the first african-american president yes he is but he's also white too ultimately i think as humans we like to find our tribe find our pack we like to stay in our own groups our own communities our own cultural communities i'm not racist i'm keeping it real you can watch my video about how we can stop racism i'll, I'll put the link below or, or whatever when you're mixed race you're kind of an outlier to each group if there was a mixed race town instead of like a little italy or chinatown if there was a mixed race town it would be too awesome like people couldn't handle it they wouldn't know what to expect <laughs> That's what I think. So now let's talk about the pros. Not just mixed race people. Everyone when they're younger goes through the process of trying to fit in and find themselves. For myself, the big thing is when I was younger, I tried to hide my uniqueness. I tried to be like everybody else. But I realize now that being mixed race is so awesome. I realize that instead of being like everybody else, that I stand out from the crowd. I'm unique and people want to be like me. People are curious. So I changed my perception of it. Instead of thinking like, I need to fit in to be like you, I just started embracing who I am. And I think it's amazing to be mixed race because you're introduced to different cultures, different foods, different ways of life. The dinners are awesome. A lot of times my papa, my grandmother would make stir fried dishes with Italian spaghetti. You're more inclined to learn new languages. Just because you can't fit into the box, you can relate more to other people of different cultures, black, white, Hispanic. You're like a chameleon, you can blend into any group. Lastly, <laughs> you're attractive, you're good looking. So, all right, not, not all the time. It doesn't really matter if you're mixed or not, but a lot of people think you're good looking or they're just like, uh. Oh. So instead of being like, ah, oh, no, I'm not. I think you should embrace it. You're good looking because you look different from everybody else. You're not the norm. So when you learn to embrace your power, embrace your uniqueness, embrace who you are, it's exhilarating. You feel empowered. Because people want to be like you. People want to look up to you. I feel like I'm, I'm in the matrix. I just look at things differently. I see things differently. I react differently. I'm more culturally adaptive. How I view myself now. So when I was younger, I used to blame my parents for not really teaching me Italian and Chinese. But I realized that doesn't really change anything by being upset with my parents or complaining that they didn't teach me this, you know. They had their own sh** to deal with, their own struggles, their own sense of identity to deal with too. Don't blame your parents. I view myself as Italian and Chinese American. I happily eat a lot of noodles and pasta. I'm happy to be who I am now and I wouldn't trade being mixed for anything else. When I was younger, I didn't have the confidence to own who I was as a person, but now I feel empowered and I feel that I could use my identity, use my story to really be a bridge for people to adapt to other cultures. I think that's very important. So mixed race people out there, you could change people's perceptions about a certain group of people because you are both. And also I'm not defined by my culture, by my ethnicity. I'm a human being like you. We still fight over cultures and, and all this like hate, especially now there's a lot of Asian hate, there's black hate, there's Spanish hate. If you put aside all these differences and we sit down, and we have a nice meal together, and then I tell you a story and we eat together, we're gonna be friends. So we're not black and white, we're all human beings. That's a big mind shift. So what I would tell my younger self is embrace who you are. It's okay to be different. I stepped outside for a second. I need to take my dog out. Lastly, I forgot to mention in the video, if you're like me and you grew up speaking one language, like I grew up speaking English and I didn't really embrace the other languages growing up, like Italian and Chinese, it's never too late to learn. Don't let the naysayers tell you, like there's studies that say it's best to learn the language before you're 18 years old. But I started learning Italian and Chinese after I was 18 years old. Now, I'm not fluent, but I'm okay right now. Don't let people tell you to stop if you really want to explore it for yourself. Like everyone's journey is different. If the polygots speak like 10 languages, don't let that deter you. Do what you want. If you need some tips on language learning, even though I'm not fluent, especially when you're old, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Your difference makes you special. And there are other people out there just like you. I'm one of them. Leave a comment below. Share with me your story. Maybe we can all come together. I'd genuinely like to hear it. And if you like this video, if you could relate in any way, please like, comment, and subscribe. And also, come up with your YouTube video. Not just me, I want to hear your story as well. With that said, I wish you tons of health, wealth, and happiness. Peace.